and let's say you are all done with the homework and you just uh, want to see where you are. That's what these resources are for. The review guide, hopefully you know you remember seeing this for exam one. <laughs> but if somehow you missed it while you are preparing for exam one, this is under modules. It's, uh, um, that's where I organize everything. Um, so exam two review guide will remind you of what you should be looking at. And um, I think this step in particular, uh, preparing the correct formula card will be particularly important for this exam. Because um, most common mistakes students make is you, uh, so you know, you look at maybe, I don't know, chapter six or chapter seven summary, and the biggest uh, and most common mistake that someone might make is that you look at all these formulas and you will, uh, uh, well, uh, hopefully you're not copying down the vocabulary terms, but you look at all these formulas and you just start copying, that, copying them down from Wins Displacement Law all the way down to, um, I don't know, all the way down to the Compton wavelength or Baumer formula, Rydberg formula. And if you read Andrew Elby's advice in Portable TA, that's totally not the way to do it. Um, so out of, so you saw me scroll through something like maybe 20, 25, maybe even 30 formulas. I'm gonna guess 25. 25 formulas, of those you probably need three or four. There are key three or four equations that you will need. And um, that's part of the studying process, figuring out which is important. So like, you know, these two should have been your, these are two of the three or four. <laughs> and as you look through it, you'll recognize some of them we barely spent any time in class, like the Riedelberg formula. I barely even mentioned it. It's because it's part of the background, but this is not where the bulk of what we cover for uh, quantum mechanics is. Um, so. Real, so I guess it's hard to cover this in a few minutes, but what I would recommend is read Andrew Elby's advice in Portable TA. He does it in both volumes. That's why I posted it both here. They are both for you know physics 4A and physics 4B, so topics don't match up, but the advice he's giving applies. So essentially what you are putting in the formula, your formula card, um, these two are the two biggest categories. One is the um, sort of basic conceptual, well, basic starting point. This is uh, the basic, like the Lorentz transformation for special relativity. This is something that would be a starting point for almost any problem you do in that particular set of topics you are, we are covering on the exam. That's one big category. And um, you might even want to have some examples of how to apply those formulas. And the second is some special cases. So if we are looking at, let's say, chapter six summary, one example of a special case would be, I don't know, ground state energy value for a Bohr model. This is something you could drive on the spot if you, you know, knew what you're doing. But if a question happens to, um, happens to, so, 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 um, a question happens to address hydrogen atom and if the question asks you to drive it, then you know you would be driving it. But if you um, don't want to, um, but if the question doesn't ask you to drive it, and it's some quick answer like in a multiple choice, then that's where it would be useful to have this special formula. But I will tell you that within each chapter, there aren't that many of these. Maybe I will say two or three at most. Um, so in the in chapter six, so this is one, uh, the Compton scattering formula, it's probably here somewhere. Wait, is it not here? It ought to be here. Um, wait, Compton scattering formula, yeah, that was chapter six material, right? Uh, okay, okay, it is in, okay, yeah, Compton shift, the Compton formula. Um, so those are probably the two biggest special case formulas. But, so what it comes down to is, um, so the one way I'm telling you, begging you not to do, is don't just copy down the formulas. You are actually supposed to know what those formulas represent. And um, so, uh, so there's that advice, read it, uh, follow it, and um, um, having the right, I mean, ideally you have everything memorized, so you don't need a formula card, <laughs> but you know, so many people, I find out each semester that don't have the formulas memorized, <laughs> then um, these, the advice you find there are the good ones to follow. Um, yeah, and uh, for the topics we are covering, just one last thing, 
there are some topics that your textbook doesn't quite cover in enough depth. It's uh, especially true in special relativity. So that's why you have these notes. And if you were working on the special relativity problem set, then you saw them. So, um, so hopefully these are not surprising to you that there are some collision problems that goes uh, further than what your textbook does. Um, but you know, so if you are getting caught up on homework or whatnot, then that's what you should be doing. Um, so yeah, as you are preparing for the exam, the, there's a review guide here, and there isn't exactly a past exam I can post because um, I don't know if I told you guys this. Last time I taught this class, I covered the special relativity after quantum mechanics. And uh, what that forced me to do is I didn't have a good place to cover quantum, uh, the Compton scattering because Compton scattering is relativistically correct formula. So if you do quantum mechanics before special relativity, then you can't quite cover it. So, so what I did was I took the exams two and three from last semester, last year when I taught this class last, first and the last time. Um, and I put together what would have been on e exam then if uh, we covered the topics the same order we did. So that's what this sample is. Um, um, it's uh, uh, sort of what you would expect from your exam being 70% special relativity. It's about two thirds from exam three that covered the special relativity. And, um, and, uh, um, and about a third quantum mechanics. And as I was writing up the solution, sorry, I was realizing a lot of typos. So for those typos, um, they are noted in the, the sample answers. It's mostly in the multiple choice. It's, uh, um, I'll just tell you where they are so that when you see it, you don't. Um, these, I think the problem says 10 to the 8, it's supposed to be 10 to the 16. Um, uh, I realized that when I was uh, copying over the solution. And I think there was one more. Uh, Wait. There was one more. Maybe it's back here. Yeah, this should have been a different number. But um, in your exam, you won't have those typos again. Uh, you probably won't even be the same questions. So uh, this um, multiple choice, it's a similar deal as exam one. The examples I have are the 20 question set. But as I was telling you with exam one, the main problem I found with this is that they were too difficult. So. Um, so it wasn't an accurate measure of how much students knew. Sometimes people are just guessing. And even if you guess randomly, you still get four or five right. So, um, so what I'm planning on doing for exam two is exactly the same thing as exam one. You will have about 40 multiple choice questions, probably exactly 40. But individually, they'll be easier than the questions you see here. You will still have, I don't know, maybe 10 questions that are a similar level of difficulty as these. Some of them are probably actually exactly these questions. Um, but the, uh, the majority of the multiple choice questions will be easier, as in you need to be able to do them in one to two minutes so that you can finish the set in about an hour. So, the, so what would have been sample past the exam is posted here. And this is the same note that we had. So for those people who came in late. Um, so I didn't quite send out the survey for self-grading early enough, so I'm just going by my sense of for how well it went. I thought it went well enough, so we'll do it again for exam two. And I will uh, put out a survey right after exam two. So, um, so your feedback, it's good for me to have it, just for future semesters, <laughs> if I'm gonna do the same thing. And, um, and for your exam three, uh, we can always go back to the old way of doing things for exam three if uh, somehow this is not working out for people. Yeah.